When Captain America throws his mighty shield, all those who choose to oppose the shield must yield. But how does the shield seem to always come back to him? Welcome to a tie-in video where I wear a tie-in video. Sometimes I'm Scott, and this is a video that I've been looking forward to for quite some time now. Cap's shield has a really fun history and some trivia behind it as well. When Captain America debuted, his shield wasn't round like we know it is today. The disc shape was only introduced in the second issue of the comics because the first design too closely resembled the chest plate of another patriotic comic book character from MLJ's Pep comics named The Shield. This new shield design would obviously make it easier to throw, which we see drawn for the first time in issue number four, although there was a uh, written text story in issue number three by Stan Lee that describes Cap throwing his shield as well. The question remains though, why does his shield seem to almost magically return to him after he throws it? A very simple answer would probably be something like how it'd be boring to have to show Cap always going over and picking up his shield every time he threw it. But the comic book answer is simply that Cap has been fighting with that shield for so long that he has learned how it works. He knows its weight and balance and how it would react when thrown against different surfaces at different speeds and angles. Cap has described his shield not just as a weapon, but rather more like a part of himself, an extension of his body. When his shield sank to the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean, Tony Stark made him a replacement, but Cap could never get used to the feel of it when he would throw it. One time, uh, he did throw it in battle, and that proved to be a bad decision as he failed to catch it upon its return and then was shot. He then used a replica of his original shield for a bit before being given a photonic shield that could mimic Cap's lost shield, as well as morph into other objects like a staff or a small knife with a little star on it. Eventually though, his shield was found, albeit in pieces, but fixed using comic book science and luck. The point is that the reason he's able to throw his shield and have it come back to him is because he knows the shield so precisely and has a mental capacity to calculate ballistics and trajectories on the fly. However, this was not always the case. When Cap came back after being frozen in ice, Avengers number six shows us that Iron Man installed sub-miniature transistors within the center of Cap's shield and gave him a glove with powerful magnets. This would allow Cap to throw his shield, have it go anywhere and do anything he wants, and then return to him, firmly planting itself on his arm. This lasted for just a tiny bit before being taken away in Tales of Suspense number 62. Cap's shield is stolen by prisoners who want to use its new magnetic capabilities to open up their last gate to freedom, but it doesn't work because Cap removed all of Iron Man's tech since it ruined the shield's delicate balance, balance that Cap needs in order to perform those awesome throws. What's really interesting is that one of the Age of Ultron trailers shows this clip right here, which seems an awful lot like those magnetic gloves that Iron Man made for him in the comics. Now I want to stress that this video is being released before the movie comes out, so I have no idea what this clip means, but I really hope we see a similar thing where Iron Man gives Captain America's shield an upgrade before Cap gets rid of it all, preferring the shield how it was before. What do you guys think? Do you like the idea of Cap's shield returning? to him because he simply has a mastery of the weapon, or do you like the idea of technology enhancing the shield? And if you're watching this before Age of Ultron comes out, what do you think the story behind the shield will be? Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments. This video is a part of NerdSync Avengers Month. We're doing a whole month of Avengers and Marvel episodes in preparation for Age of Ultron. We've got a few more to come that I'm very excited about, so make sure you hit that big sexy subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of it. Once again, I'm Scott. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram, and we'll see you on Monday for another episode of the NerdSync Podcast, available on iTunes and SoundCloud. Links below. See ya.